In this video we're looking at three properties in the national parks, two in the New Forest and one in the Peak District. In every case the appeal is against a condition applied by the council to remove certain permitted development rights. Of the three appeals, two succeeded and one was rejected. This is a property on the edge of the New Forest. An application was approved for two-storey side and rear extensions but the approval also removed permitted development classes A, B, C and E of part one, plus class A of part two. With regard to part one, class A, the inspector considered that the central position of the house in the spacious plot would ensure that there was sufficient space around it after side and rear extensions were added. Class B does not apply as it is excluded for a house on Article 2.3 land, Roof lights under Class C would not impact on the character of the area. Turning to Class E, the instructor pointed out that outbuildings cannot be forward of the principal elevation of the original house and in a national park cannot be located beyond the side elevation of the original house. Given the substantial setback of the house, he stated that a restriction under Class E is unnecessary to safeguard the character of the area. At this point I'm looking at the house and I'm not clear whether the inspector considered the short or the long elevation to be the principal elevation. The architectural features of the bay windows, the dormer windows, the ridge line and the main entrance on the long elevation would suggest that this is the principal elevation, not the short elevation that is parallel with the highway. This assumes, of course, that these features were always present on the original house. Turning to part two, class A, the council applied this condition to prevent the hedges being replaced by a fence, representing a less sympathetic boundary. The inspector pointed out that the boundary treatment is unconnected with the original application for house extensions. As such, it fails the test of being necessary to make the development acceptable in planning terms. The inspector concluded that the condition was neither reasonable nor necessary and the appeal was granted. The second property in the New Forest is a two-storey structure with attached single-storey stables and a separate garage. Approval was secured to add a first floor extension and to convert the stables to living accommodation. The condition applied by the council was for the removal of permitted development rights in the classes A, B, C and E. The council's argument was that it needed to regulate the scale of future alterations in order to properly manage the mix of housing stock available. The inspector acknowledged that the site lay in a nationally important landscape where there has been a consistently applied policy for the management of dwellings. Accordingly, it was found that there was clear justification for removing the PD rights and the appeal was dismissed. I'm not sure I understand why this appeal was dismissed and the first case was allowed. They're both within the New Forest National Park and so I would expect a consistency of treatment. Yet the first property, visible from a busy road, secured the appeal while the cottage hidden from view down a small lane, was refused its appeal. If you know why this may have happened, please do enlighten me. I'm always ready to learn. The third National Park appeal is in the Peak District. Furthermore, it's also in a conservation area. Permission was granted for the conversion of an attached workshop into residential use, plus the rebuild of a lean-to workshop. The approval was accompanied by the removal of permitted development rights under Part 1, Classes A, D and E, plus Part 2, Class A. Looking at Part 2, Class A, the council insisted that the wall along the southern boundary be retained. The inspector observed that the approved extension into the workshop did not directly affect the boundary and made the point that a condition cannot be imposed to remedy an issue not created by the proposed development. The site is at the edge of open countryside and is seen within the context of a built-up village centre. The rear of the site is within long-range views across fields 
and along the road approaching the village from the south. The council claimed that it would be harmful to the character of the building if the workshop was given a more domestic treatment. But they didn't explain this assertion. The inspector was not convinced that the exercise of the permitted development rights would cause visual harm concluded that the condition was neither reasonable nor necessary in the interest of the character and appearance of the area, the appeal was allowed. That's it for this video. Please like or subscribe to, to support this channel. And next week I'm looking at clusters of properties located in the Greenbelt. Thanks for watching. See you next week.